Hi, this is Annabelle Kay from Coffee Clutch and I'm talking to Tristan Martin today in the second of our series on encryption. And Tristan is our helpful tech genius who can tell us things in English and today's subject is how to encrypt your smartphone. But we're not going to be talking about all of them, otherwise we'll be here all night. But Tristan's going to take us through the two biggest smartphone groups that our users use. So welcome, Tristan. Thank you so much for giving us your time again. Um, it was so helpful what you did for us on encrypting your, your laptop. I can't wait to get going on the next bit. So yeah, over to you. Uh Okay, the well, first thing you just asked me just to give a bit of a recap over the sort of difference for passwords and encryption, just so we make sure that that's all fully clear. Um, you've got the um, your, your password is essentially the key of what you get into a device. So if you don't have any encryption on, you have a, a password just for the device, the that is purely to just use the computer, the laptop, whatever it is. When you apply encryption, encryption recodes all the data, but you have a password for the encryption, which is how it decodes the data so you can actually see it. So otherwise, it's a random bunch of characters that you don't know what they're set, what it is, without actually that password. So the password is essentially a key. But when you haven't got a device encrypted, it's there's a lot of tricks that can be used to view the data on a hard drive or to change your password. But once it's encrypted, the actual device, those little tricks don't work. So the password is completely key, and that is what's needed to access the data. If you forget it and you don't have the recovery key, which is, as a lot of people have gone through the encryption, you've been given a recovery key, without either of those two, your data is inaccessible because it's designed so nobody can get into it without those. That's brilliant. Um, I was talking to people yesterday evening who were still under the impression, and I think it's quite common, that if you've got a password on your smartphone, that's it, it's secure. Or if you've got a fingerprint locker or Facebook recognition, that's the end of it. And I think what you're saying is that that's not necessarily the case. No. You, the password is purely to get into a device. If the hard drive's not encrypted, so this is predominant, this is really computers that I'm focused on at the moment uh, with it, uh, because phones are slightly different, but with uh, the purely with the computer, if Windows is the administrator of, or, or the Mac OS is the administrator of the actual equipment inside the computer. So your hard drive, which stores all your data, is under the control of whichever OS you've booted up from. If I get a CD, and on that CD is a copy of Windows that is my Windows. Mm -hmm. So I'm administrator of this Windows, put that in the computer to boot up, then I am loading up from my version of Windows where I'm the administrator and it can control all the hardware in the computer. So the hard drive, so I can view the data. That bypasses the password. The encryption puts a security wall essentially around the hard drive so I need that password to get in there to view the data because it's all the data's all jumbled up and it can only get put into a, a central manner with that password. So that's where the uh, the secu that's what the security does. That's what the encryption does. It means that I can't take that hard drive and put it into something else that I've got control over it without that password. So something very similar is going on with smartphones then, but the, the language, the labels are different. Um, but it, something very similar is going on. I'm glad we cleared that up. So what is the number one most popular smartphone in our groups? Because we were surveying it, and what came out top as the most commonly used? The, the one that came out the top most commonly used is the iPhone, which is fantastic because it makes a lot of lives really easy. Uh, because I have had to sort of track through with some of the definitions between some of the other manufacturers uh, with the Android phones, but the iPhone was the one that came out the top of the poll that uh, you did, which um, with the iPhone, it is really simple. Uh, when you set up your iPhone, you set up a passcode with it. As soon as the passcode is there, your phone is encrypted. So the encryption is all done on the device. Uh, so with your iPhone, you've got all your, the um, memory and everything in that is encrypted. 
you can't take the chips out and read the data on them. You need that passcode. Everything is locked to the device, so uh, there's no removable memory, so there's no uh, SD cards that you can take out. Everything's inside here, which gives a lot of advantages, but also potentially a lot of risk. So the advantages are that it's encrypted. You can lose this phone, I can lose this phone, and no one can get into it because of my passcode on there. They would have to know what my passcode is. The uh, So the data is completely safe, and as saying that you don't need to report it as a data breach if it's encrypted, um, because no one else can get access to it. The downside to that is, all of your data, if you've taken photos on your phone, they only exist on your phone unless you use other tools that allow them to be synchronized off. So uh, Dropbox, OneDrive, they allow, uh, iCloud, they allow you to synchronize your photos uh, using certain cloud storage. So the, the OneDrive SharePoint, again, all those different software allows you to access data on your phone, but also update it on the cloud. Otherwise, if your phone just stopped working, you can't get any of your photos or any of your data back off it unless it's stored somewhere else as well. But the, the, the important thing for your phone is if it's lost, no one else can get into it because if you've got it unlocked, then you've got immediate access to your emails, to, your, to whatever documents you've stored on there, uh, and anybody can view that. So uh, a good example of that was I was a teacher for 10 years, so uh, since 2006, 2007, up to Easter last year, I was a secondary school teacher. I had all my school emails on my phone because as a teacher, you're expected to respond at all hours of the day. Uh, you expect you are all over the place when you to be able to deal with that. Now, those emails would contain information about the children because you'd have heads of years, heads of houses, heads of uh, departments, yourselves all talking about what you need to with the, the students to make sure that they're going to achieve the best. If I didn't have a passcode on my phone and it was lost, those emails, by just tapping on the mail app, anybody could read. But by having a passcode on the front, no one can get into the phone. And because no one can get into the phone, it's all encrypted, they can't, there's no way for them to get the data off. Uh, so it keeps it completely safe. So out of pure simplicity, the iPhone just makes it so simple because there's no removable memory. Everything's all within the one box. It's all encrypted as soon as you set that passcode. Now, I'm not an iPhone user, so a lot of this is going to go over my head. I'm a, yep. I'm a Samsung user, and we're going to get to that in a second. So can you talk us through how do you turn on your settings in your, your encryption in an iPhone? Um, and I'm going to leave you to that because I have absolutely no idea. The last time I had an iPhone was an iPhone 3, so I'm way behind the times on this. How does a, a typical iPhone user do that? You don't, it's there, it's automatically done. The The bit that gives you the security is setting up the passcode. All of the data is by default encrypted on your iPhone. So the passcode that you set is the decryption key. So without that mm -hmm. passcode, they can't access the data. So there's no ways in to get, you can't remove the chip and read the ones and zeros. So if you were, um, if someone was trying to forensically investigate your iPhone and was actually removing one of the memory chips to read all the ones and zeros, uh, they would not get any sensible data. There is nothing they can get from it. You need to make sure you're using a strong passcode. Um, obviously, with the later iPhones, we've moved on to uh, facial recognition or fingerprint recognition, but it's that which nobody else will be able to do the passcode is the bit that needs to be really strong. So don't pick one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five, six. Don't pick something that simple because people will try it. The, um, what you want to do is make sure that there are a, it's a really, it's a unique combination. Preferably you get uh, two choices. You can either have, actually I think you have three. You might be able to use a password. You can either use a four digit pin or a six digit pin. So, don't go for the four, it's um, very simple. Um, there are essentially 9,999 combinations, so just under 10, well, 10,000 combinations. Try and go for the six digit pin, uh, it makes it a bit more secure. Make sure you've got your phone linked to iCloud, 
so with your Apple account, which you tend to have to do anyhow, but also make sure you're familiar with the Find My Phone feature, because the Find My Phone, you can go into it and remotely wipe your phone. So you can choose a setting there. So if your phone's lost or stolen, you can, nobody's gonna get into it within a space of an hour if you've got a, a decent strong pin on that. That gives you time to get to a computer, to log into the I, to iCloud, to log in with your Apple ID and password. And in there, you can look where the phone is. You can look where um, the, you can look at all the other things it's got on it. Um, so phone is, you can look at um, the, you can put up a message on there if it, if it was a lost phone. Uh, you can get straight on and you can tell it to wipe. So that will go through the internet, through the 4G signal, and the phone will just wipe it, the data off it. So it gives you that extra bit of security, but you want to do that on the, the quicker side. Um, make sure that obviously you tell your, the carrier, so the whoever you've got your contract with that the phone's been lost or stolen. Uh, there will be something I'll mention at the end about that. So they can also block the phone. All of those things. So just, can, I, can I just back up the tree? Because that's a lot to take on board at once. So our phones are encrypted as soon as you turn them on and give them a password of some description. Yeah. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah. But you're also advocating that you have a find my phone and wipe my phone thing set up. Yeah. Does that come inside the iPhone software and you just turn it on or is that something you have to add to it? it? It's completely on by default. Uh, it's as soon as you, you, when you set up your phone, you have to have an Apple account. So you have an Apple ID, which is your email address. You have your password that you set there. Uh, and that's the one that you use when you buy stuff off the app store and things like that. You go to the web browser, so onto your computer or on another phone, you log in and you log in with that Apple ID. You can then control your phone from a distance, as in you can lock it, you can make it make a loud noise, uh, you can see where it is if it's got uh, the GPS signal and you can order it to be white. Realistically, having the, the pin on there, people aren't going to get access. Uh, having a the the find my phone feature just gives you a little bit of extra assurance that you know you're you're forcing things to be white uh, which just gives you that little bit more confidence of actually yes the data's been wiped off there what you tend to find is someone who's stolen a phone uh, they're they're not going to just sit there and try and go through the pin uh, to try and get access after maybe they'll try a few attempts but otherwise even with a four digit pin, there's 10,000 combinations and they've got to be manually typed in each one of those combinations. They're going to wipe the phone to try and reuse it or sell it onto somebody else. Uh, and that's where you inform your mobile carrier. So the, com uh, the company you have your contract with, uh, so they can block the phone, so they can just completely disable it. So no one can ever get use of it. But the data is encrypted as soon as you entered that passcode. So if I've got customer data on on a on a, an iPhone and the phone's lost or stolen, I do I need to report that as a data breach to the ICO? Because obviously one thing we're all quite capable of is losing our phone. Yeah. And I'm quite shocked about how much customer data is actually on my phone because I access this through an app and that through an app and that through an app. And before you know it, I think I've got more information on my phone than the astronauts took to the moon and back. You know, it's a massive amount. So if, if I've got a smartphone, I'm an iPhone, and I lose it, have I had a data breach because it's encrypted? It's encrypted. So the... the the, the bit with the ICO is they have not said you have to encrypt your technology. What they've no. said is if you, have a, if you lose a device, so if you lose your computer, if you lose your phone, and it stores uh, personal data of your customers, clients, stores personal data, you have to report it to them. They will, um, depending upon the, the level of damage that can be done from that information, will be whether or not you need to report it as a breach to all your customers, uh, whether there might be a fine or anything like that, um, an investigation or anything like those. What the ICO really want you to do is to make sure you're using ready, readily available features to make sure that you are doing your best to keep the devices secure. Um, 
technically speaking, someone could take an iPhone and sit there and try 10,000 combinations to get in. And they might get in after 5,000, after the 5,000th try uh, to get into it. Now, the, the thing that's going to cause them disruption is every four or five sort of mistakes, the phone will lock itself for about 15 minutes. So they won't be able to do anything for 15 minutes. So the amount of time it's going to take them to try and get into it, it's, it's not, not worth it. They're not going to do it. But, you know, encryption is, is not perfect. There, there's a way into it because you've got to get into it to use it. So you have a password for encryption. The ICO understand there is a password to get in. If they can get that password on your phone or whatever, they're going to get into the data. But have you done the best you can do to secure the data? Of course you have, because you've turned on the encryption. And the so it's a good idea to put a, a post-it note on your phone to remind you of your password then. So it's, yeah. it's a big deal that you secure that and you don't yeah. use something really obvious like the same PIN number for all your cards and your phone and yeah. everything, isn't it? Uh, again, it's something that you might keep. Uh, that's a secure point that you don't let uh, that other people aren't going to know. So, but if you've got a six digit code, yeah, you don't want to use your phone number, which would be six digits. You want to make sure it's something that you're going to easily remember. And considering that, how many phone numbers we can remember in our head, a six digit well, code. Well, for me, is that's, that's none, actually. I really struggle with it. Now, one thing before we move on to Samsung's, which I think is the next platform, I keep talking to people who go, but I don't have any customer data on my phone. And I go to them, don't you at least put the name of your top 10 customers in the phone address book so when they ring, you know who it is. And they go, oh, yeah. And I'm going, but isn't that storing customer data on your phone? Have I gone mad? No, it, it's there. We store that data. We're going to have customers who call. It's so much nicer. I certainly feel when I'm dealing with my customers, if I have a customer call up and I can greet them by their name, it's like, mm -hmm. hi, Annabelle, how are you doing? When they call, it's so much better than me going, good morning, TL Martin Limited, because they're ringing my personal mobile. If it's coming to a, the landline, well, yes, it's the company. If it's coming to my mobile, it's coming to me as a person. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's, a, for me personally, I think it's a much nicer because the customer feels valued. But you, you're going to do it anyhow because you're going to need the details on your phone because you might need, uh, you're going to, you need to call them when you're traveling to see them. You might be... Uh, all sorts of communication. You might have WhatsApp messages between them. Uh, we might use Facebook messages between them. You might use text messages between them. I, for myself, I keep myself very open on communication uh, because people have different preferred methods. Um, yeah, I'm on about seven platforms, I think. Yeah. And sometimes uh, people pin me on all of them and go, you haven't answered. And I'm actually chasing them going, oh, no, the other one's ringing. I can't get there. Exactly. And of course, it's not it's not just phones and speech, is it? I, we, I've got an invoicing app on my phone, yep. um, a time recording app. I've got access to uh, my invoicing information. It's not just name and number anymore, is it? You can have your CRM on your phone. If, if you look at contacts, your your contacts is name, number, address. It could be several numbers, email, it could be birthday. Uh, it could be all sorts of data that you feel you need to have. You'll have, uh, just going on the default app, your calendar. You'll sync your calendar because you want to know what appointments you've got. What have you put in your calendar? You put the address where you're going to. You may have put notes in the communication. There could be, it could be that you've had an invite off them and they've sent other information to you. It's all in that calendar. Uh, even though you're not thinking it's personal data, there it is because it's got the name, it's got the email address potentially of the person. You've got, um, you, you've got your email because we use we receive our emails on our phones so much now. so if we're going to do that we people have emailed us so it's got that data and it's got the contents of the emails actually in there uh, and those are just the the core parts of what you use a smartphone for before you look at the other apps you might put on there where um, i mean actually even the photo app you've taken photos you of your phone on your phone depending on what you've taken photos of it's personal data uh it of some kind, or it's certainly data you might want to keep secure. Um, and I think that's very much where Apple's gone down the route of is everybody deserves to have the ability to have their data secure. Um, and I, I probably won't be too long, maybe with a couple of years after GDPR's in, that actually all operating systems just have encryption turned on. Um, the now that leads me very nicely into the fact that 
Apple users have basically got it made, haven't they, as far as this goes? On the mobiles. Uh, uh, on, the, on the mobiles, yeah. And then I yeah. Because I've still got to turn it on at the moment. Oh, yeah, but on the phones, which is what yeah, we're talking about today. According to our polls, everybody who's not using Apple uses a wide variety of things, but the biggest sort of cluster within the next level, wasn't it, was Samsung. Now, Samsung are completely different, and I'm, I'm a Samsung user, so I'm all ears now. Yeah. Tell me about Samsung, because I've read the instructions and gone, what? Just in one step before we go, we say with Samsung, Android is the next brand. Android is an operating system created by Google. Okay, what every manufacturer can do is take that operating system and tweak it to what they want to give you and how they want it to work for you with their own hardware. So Samsung is a very popular one, uh, and I had a very, very surprising uh, conversation with Samsung yesterday um, on the phone to try and work out about the the security because. As I said with the iPhone, you put the code in, it's encrypted. So you'd expect roughly the same to be with an Android, except your Android sort of phones, you've got the main phone, but you've also got a memory card in it. So with having the phone and a memory card, you've got two places data is stored. So that's two different areas you need to encrypt for your phone to be fully secured, or you need to be very careful what data you store. Um, now, speaking to Samsung, uh, on their latest model, the S9, it has what is called a secure folder. So in the settings, you can add a secure folder where you can put apps into that folder and they will be encrypted. They do not do device-wide encryption on the S9. You have to buy the business model of the S9, which is what's not sold by Carphone Warehouse or the other companies. It's one which is called, has Knox Security, and I'll put a link to it in the actual comments. That is device-wide encryption. But the standard model that a normal person would go and buy, there isn't a device encryption on it. You can only have a secure folder. But this is why it gets really a bit more confusing because uh, this model here, and I, I know I'll be backwards on the screen, uh, I think, Oh, no, I'm correct, um, the, what you end up with is this model I've got here, the, this um, Samsung, is a couple of years old, and it's the entry-level model, the A model. And if I just hold up, I think that hopefully it will come up on the screen a bit better. Uh, you'll see that at the bottom, uh, it says encrypt device and encrypt SD card. That is what you're looking for. It doesn't matter what Android phone you have within the settings and the security area you're looking for those two options encrypt device and encrypt sd card what those will do will allow you to encrypt the whole device and encrypt the sd card um, if it doesn't say those you cannot be 100 percent sure the whole device is encrypted because as i said i was flabbergasted when I, I spoke to two technical people in the technical department at Samsung yesterday because I first one who told me I rang up and said right how do I turn on device encryption on the Samsung I see secure folder but how do I know the whole device is encrypted and they came back very bluntly said it can't be it's not done no other answer nothing there I rang up a second time in case it was a, a technician who just didn't know spoke to a totally different person they did a lot of investigation back and forth and they came back to me and said the only way to have the, the S9, which is the latest model, encrypted is to buy the business version, which has uh, Knox, so K-N-O-X, security on it, and that will encrypt the whole device. So the, the only way I can give us a, a sort of a, a faith for people to know is if you see that it actually says at the bottom on the phone, on, in your settings, encrypt device and encrypt SD card, turn them both on, the device will be encrypted. If it doesn't say that, then you have no guarantee that it actually is encrypted. For Samsung to say on their, their top of the range model, the one that is the iPhone uh, competitor, that the whole device cannot be encrypted unless you buy the business version, is sort of saying in my mind, home users, we don't care about your security because they're only letting you have a secure folder. And what can you put in your secure folder? That the, the contacts is rooted in your phone of where it is. It's not a movable app. 
So I don't think that could go in a secure folder. Uh, that would be very much trial and error. And if you miss the app that you do get your data on and it's not in a secure folder, it's not going to be encrypted. So you've got a, a, a juggling case going on. And that is going to be pretty much the same across all Android phones. So the, the way to go into that is you go into your settings and in the settings, you'll usually see something with, uh, now every Android phone is different, even within the same manufacturer, it can be different, but you're looking at the lock screen or the security settings. Those are the two areas. Often they combine it together. So usually what you've got is, um, well, uh, there we go. Uh, you usually have in your settings, the uh, lock screen and security, or you'll have something similar. So you're looking for the key term is security. Uh, the other one is potentially lock screen. And inside that, you will see, again, um, about whether or not your device can be encrypted or not. It is a turn on, you have to turn it on. So if I go into encrypt device, it tells me there and gives me the option to start the encryption. And that will encrypt the whole device there. And the same for the SD card. They both have to be done separately because your SD card is removable media. So it's classed as one's the device, one's an additional hard drive. So uh, those of you that have done the bit lock on Windows will have noticed that you will encrypt the hard drive, but if you've got a second hard drive attached, you also have to encrypt that hard drive as well. Now that's really done my head one. So we've got a phone that's as expensive as Apple. Yeah. That doesn't do that. I was I was very amazed when I spoke to the Samsung technical because I it, it didn't make sense in my mind and I wanted some assurance of which way it was whether or not because you think logically a model that was that sort of price they're going to do it the same way as iPhone does which is it's by default encrypted. Uh, the bit that's annoyed me personally is the, the tool to encrypt is built into Google's operating system. So for them to turn it, because that's why it's on the lower model, it's on a lot of Android models out there, but for them to turn it off and say you have to have the business version with the, with the Knox security means they're charging for something that might be better than Google's version, but not necessarily needed anything more than Google's version, but have removed that choice from users. Um, and that is something I've, I, that's, uh, that's why I spoke to them twice to find out how do I make sure the phone's secure. We've had a few bumps in the roads on our GDPR journey with platforms, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I'm not talking about, you know, Android phones, but we had a thing with Dropbox originally saying that home-based stuff wasn't going to be secured. And eventually, after a lot of hassle and aggravation, I think they finally announced that every version of Dropbox is going to have the same standards of security. But is this is this the case for people actually getting back to Samsung and saying, look, I can't use your phone for my business. I can't if you're not prepared to offer. Why, why should you only have a 900 quid phone option? Is there yeah. another way to go if you don't want to be Apple? You know? um, the way I recommend it is have a look at the different uh, Android phones out there. And actually, when you're looking at one, go don't just buy it online. Go and see one in working and go, I want to see the security settings. I want to check. I can actually turn this on there. Because as I say, this, this model here is the lowest end entry level. Uh, I just literally bought it so I could play about with Android. Uh, so I could just do bits of support, see what settings you could have in there, because I was going to create some um, tutorial videos for people. And I very quickly realized that even with Samsung, what they've got on the A model is very different software wise to what's on the, the S range and the other ranges that they have out there. Uh, and that they're not, they don't have that consistency across. Um, but it was, that was the, the case of, I, I, that was a cheap end range. And I saw the feature on there, which is why when I then, somebody came to me with, I think it was the S8, and all I saw was a secure folder, as I started looking into it a bit more. Um, and it, it so, so should we? Obviously, I'm not going to get rid of my phone today, no. but we're talking about as the contract comes up for renewal, as your phone needs replacing, 
Um, this is a key thing to look at. Mm -hmm. Or is it that bad that I should get rid of my phone today and go, that's it, I'm not using it anymore? What can I do to be responsible, given I haven't got the money for a new phone today? Yeah. The, the way I'd look at it is, one, um, complain to Samsung. Uh, or complain to your phone manufacturer. That's the first thing I'd do, and just keep bombarding them with the call. If we had everybody, let's say, in this community all ring up within the next week and say, "How do I turn on device encryption?" Because I bought a phone. I'm, you know, I'm not what you would classify as a, a that sort of size of business to be buying that business model off you, the business contract. Why can't I do the device encryption? It might take the feedback to be able to encrypt the whole device because it's a software update. The software is built into Google Android. Um, the the secure folder, you can make use of that, and you can see what you can have. A, it will be an experiment with it of seeing what apps you can place in there. Any app that you feel you have any customer data on should be in there. Um, that'd be the thing to do with that part. The be very conscientious of what data you store and the ability to get in. Now, the the what you've got is again there's no law that says you have to encrypt your device you do have to report a breach if there is a significant breach with it uh, uh, you have to report it to the ico they can make the decision whether it needs to be reported to clients or not the the risk you have with a mobile and this is the the, the pure technical side of it when you're dealing with an Android phone, you've got two areas of risk. One is the SD card, because that's a memory card you can take out. You can plug that into any PC, and you can view any of the files on it. We tend to use that for storing um, pictures, for storing music, for storing those large media files, so we don't store them on the actual phone's internal memory. The phone's internal memory are a bunch of soldered chips on the actual device. so it is very unlikely for someone to be able to go and extract those chips to go and put somewhere else to try and view the ones and zeros. You're looking at forensic investigators there. However, the still technical feature, still technical statement is it's not encrypted. Um, have a strong passcode on the front will get it secure. The other uh, will get it safe, sorry, as in people can't just get it into your phone, but the data is still not encrypted. There are Google features which are the same as the iPhone one. So the uh, there is a similar sort of a Find My Phone one. Uh, I saw that in settings there, just to show. Uh, Find My Mobile. Um, this one is set up with uh, the Samsung account, so you can see that at the very top. The Find My Mobile will be linked to a Samsung account. You might find you also have it with the Google account. So start having a play about with some of those features to get yourself comfortable of, okay, my phone, I know it's in my house. Can I actually see on a map by going to Samsung, by going into Google's account, where my phone is? Because you have to have a Google account when you set up your phone. If you log into Google, you can go through the various settings that you've got, the registered devices. That's where you'll start to see your phone. Can you actually see where it is? What options do you have? Typically, again, they've got the ability that you can remotely wipe the device. So if you've got, if you lose your phone, um, if it's stolen, there is that high chance that you could go and quickly wipe it. So when you talk to the ICO to say, okay, my phone's been lost, it's contained this data, it wasn't able to be encrypted as a whole. However, within an hour of it being lost to my time, I have remotely wiped it. Um, you start to, sh again, show that conscientious effort. When it comes up to a renewal point, what I would be saying is don't just go out and blindly buy a phone. Go and go into a physical store, get the phones where they're in use so you can actually go and have a look at the settings. Go and make sure that you can, or ask the question so you've got the immediate ability to return it. Um, can I do device wide encryption? So, can I encrypt the whole device? Can I encrypt the SD card? You're not after a secure folder, you're after a device encryption. So that means the whole device is encrypted. Um, and if they say yes, and you get it through the net, uh, anyone else think you're on mute? Yeah. Uh, I've got some questions in the room we need you to address when you've got a minute, Tristan. Yeah. Sorry, I've got the builders in, so I'll yeah. mute you when I'm not speaking. No, that's fine. Uh, it's the, uh, but yes, yeah, so that would be the thing I would recommend there. 
Um, we'll just note on encryption, if you do have the ability to encrypt your SD card on your phone, the way Google works is you can only decrypt that SD card on your phone. So backups are important for your photos, for anything you have on there, because if you've got an SD card in the phone, it's encrypted by this phone, only this phone, this particular phone can decrypt it. I can't take that card out and put it in an identical model and decrypt it. Only this phone can decrypt it. So if this phone stops working, if I drop it, if I smash it, all the data on the SD card is inaccessible. Uh, and that's due to how Google have it set up uh, within how they do the encryption. So uh, definitely make sure you've got cloud copies of anything important on your phone if you've encrypted the SD card or the actual phone itself. Um, so that's from there, but that's not too dissimilar with your iPhone, except your iPhone does do a lot of syncing with the cloud itself. Um, but uh, yeah, as you say, there's uh, some questions. I'll just have a look. Uh, so, uh, well, Tracy's saying she's managed to encrypt her Microsoft phone. Um, yeah, my, some people uh, are talking about S6s, which they think don't have an SD card, which is why you don't. There seems to be a lot of variety. Nokia seems to be okay, the Nokia 5. Yep. Interesting, the diversity here. Yeah, you, you, your three main phone types is you've got Apple, and this is the same for tablets as well. You've got Apple, you've got Android, and you've got Windows. Um, Windows, I haven't looked into too much on there, but it would surprise me if there wasn't a, a facility to encrypt. Um, again, you, you'll be looking in settings to turn it on. If a few of you have gone and had uh, the various phones that use the Windows operating system, uh, it seemed to be a bit more on the decline of people I've seen using it, which is why I've not really come across it too much. But again, you're looking for the ability to turn it on. Uh, they none. It's the manufacturer that should say, we encrypt your device by default. And Apple have physically said that. They've gone out there and said, your device is encrypted. S simple as. Other ones, unless they've made that statement, you can't assume. So there should be a switch to turn it on. Uh, so a little slider within the settings. It will be, again, a security setting. Um, the And that's what you're looking for on your, your Android and your Windows phone. If you, the the S6, um, if the, the phone itself doesn't have an S, um, a card slot uh, for an SD card, uh, again, the phone itself isn't encrypted. So at the bottom of all your phones, you've got a micro USB port, which or a um, USB-C or anything like that. That allows me to hook it up to a computer. And me hooking that up to a computer, it's now it's an, it's an additional drive. There are lots of tools out there to go and get data off it. Some of them need pins. Some of them can work around pins. It, what you're doing is it, you're not actually using the device to view the data you go in through into the storage. So it becomes a lot more accessible. And but the, the technical fact is it's not encrypted. So unless you know you've turned the encryption on, the device is not encrypted. And the rule from ICO is you don't have to encrypt, but if you lose the device which has data on and it is not encrypted, they must be told. If the device is encrypted, you have not had a data breach and that is the statement because if it's encrypted well natalie's come up with a brilliant option she said she's going to staple her phone to her arm and that way she can never lose it and yeah. she won't have to uh, worry about this but she needs to be careful because she's got an eight digit pin and she needs to staple it to the other arm to the one she's going to put it in with so yeah. i suppose that's another way to secure your data staple it to you it's again it's take a bit more uh, if you are at a point where you know that you either haven't got the assurance that you've encrypted your phone then take that extra bit of precaution and care so make sure that you're not uh, leaving it on a dashboard in a car leaving it on the passenger seat uh, make sure that you're not um, leaving it on the table in a bar when you go off for a drink be a little bit more cautious with the phone um, it, it's it's taking that little bit of extra responsibility the uh, I said I was a teacher for 10 years and you'd see kids with their mobile phones and so many of them had cracked screens. My son has had, a, has had use of a mobile phone, not for the actual calling purpose, since he was the age of three, through using the apps and getting familiar with that. He has never cracked a screen in, and he's now six. He's never cracked a screen. 
yet you would have 16 year olds that within a week of a brand new phone with a cracked screen. It's about taking that bit of uh, consci conscientious effort over looking after the device. Don't just, oh, it's on the desk, I'm going off to the bar for a drink. You know, put it in your pocket, put it, have it with you. Don't just leave it there that it can be stolen. Um, and just take that, it is, it's taking that little bit more of an effort with it to make sure that you aren't going to lose it, you aren't going to leave it lying around. There seem to be some questions about if you encrypt your phone, how does that affect syncing to Dropbox or Google with your photos and stuff like that? Does it make a difference to whether you can store the data in the cloud? No, it makes no odds. So, for instance, as I said, the Apple devices are already encrypted. It's the same as your computer. So, with your with whatever it is, if it's device-based encryption, it is encrypted before it's loaded, before the operating system is loaded. So, there's a little part of the operating system that's outside of that, which contains the ability to decrypt your phone. So, that is make it readable. So, that little bit will never be encrypted. It is essentially that's the bit that, that's, that's the lock that you're putting the key into to open up the safe. If you have a key but you've got no lock on your safe, you can't unlock the safe. So you always have a little bit that is open. As soon as you the passcode goes into there, the, the ability to read the rest of the data on the phone is known, so it's all decrypted. And only once you get into the operating system does it start talking to Dropbox and OneDrive and the other synchronization tools, but at that point, everything's unencrypted because they can all see each other. So it has no problem whatsoever. It's the tools that you have a, a file, um, a sort of a vault sort of folder where you put that data into that vault. That And so in other words, a secure folder type setup, that is the time where you do have a little bit more issue because that has, if the, the data's in there, that's being read by Dropbox, Dropbox will be uploading the encrypted version. So that's how ransomware affects you because ransomware encrypts the data within Windows. So after you've, de after you've loaded Windows and therefore it's an encrypted copy that's uploaded. When you use device encryption, it's done before the operating system is loaded. So therefore it is decrypted by the time you come to use it. And at the time you come to use it is the time yeah. that Dropbox is sending up and down. So I can still use Dropbox and Google Docs on my phone. Yeah, now, um, Claire Brooks come up with an, an interesting suggestion, and she says she leaves her apps to need signing in every time she's on her phone, so that if you get in her phone, you're still not in the apps. I struggle with that on things like email because I'm in and out every 30 seconds. You know, I do it for accounting and stuff like that. What's your view on individually pin numbering your apps? Um, it, again, it comes down to your usage of what you're comfortable doing. Um, it's a bit like having never saving. We use a lot of features to make sure that our lives are a bit more manageable, a little bit more easier because we have so many things we log into. So let's say, for instance, email. Uh, email on a computer, you can not save the password. So you can have to type in the password every time you want to check your email, every time you want to send it. People don't like doing that because an email that comes through in a moment, which might be vitally important, you don't get until you manually decide to check your emails. Uh, and it's the same on the phone. If you're comfortable working in that way, then you've got a bit more security. However, and again, you're being more conscientious, which when you let ICO know if, they're, if the phone was stolen or gone, you're telling them that extra bit of security is there so they feel a bit more confident. However, you still have to report it to them because it is not encrypted and that's the bit that they've got in there and that is the physical line it isn't about how secure you've got it it is have you encrypted the device then it's not a data breach um, this there's a lot of us in IT that are very curious about what will happen if someone encrypts their device with the password password because the device is encrypted so you don't need to report it as a data breach but the password is the first thing anybody would try where's the the security part and that's going to be one of the interesting tests uh, that comes on to future that somebody will have a very insecure password for the encryption that makes the encryption pointless a bit like on your phone send it to one two three four absolutely now some people are asking about samsung 8 because there seem to be some difficulties in the chat room with encrypting the samsung um 8 
Is that because it's an older phone or? Um... The option for the SD card might be under a different heading. So they, it will very clearly say what will be encrypted. So if you if you've got the ability, so the first thing to look for is can you encrypt the device? So is there a slider for encrypting the device? Um, that's the, the, the first bit you need to look at. Forget about the SD card until you can actually encrypt the device. If you know you can encrypt the device, then there should be an option somewhere for the SD card. And again, because all phones are slightly, all Android phones are differently laid out, regardless of whether they're Samsung or um, LG or various other manufacturers out there, you've got, uh, they have slightly different locations. So if you've got the slider that says you can encrypt the device, so this isn't secure folder, this is encrypt device, but you don't see encrypt SD card, have a look in the um, file management tools, the, uh, the other settings, the SD tools, the application. Have a look through all your settings to, be, uh, to see, and, but the key term you're looking for is encrypt the SD card. If you don't see that, and when you did the encryption for the device, it didn't say this will include the SD card, then your SD card most likely is not encrypted. You can test it, turn off the phone, take the SD, put some photos on the SD card, turn off the phone, take it out of the phone, put it into your computer, can you see those pictures? If you can, it's not encrypted. If you can't, then it's encrypted. Uh, and then I've never managed to get that little tiny tray out anyway. You know, that's way above my tech grade. I've just been Googling while we're talking about the Samsung um, 8, and obviously the 8's got different versions, but certainly as far as the 8 note edge goes, it's all under apps for some reason, which is not the obvious place to put it. The, uh, so that might well so that'll be the thing to look at is it is is looking at the different tools out there or different settings out there it's it is one of the things that's frustrated me the most is that every, because I was I bought this as a cheap simple one so I could do uh, the first video I wanted to do actually on it was about key, uh, keyboard shortcuts because I found really useful on my iPhone the ability that people were asking what's your email address what's your website address what's your Facebook page so I set up TLM, IT, EM, and if I type that in, it would automatically replace it with my email. TLM, IT, FB, it would replace it with my the entire Facebook link. Uh, TLM, IT, www, replace it with the website address. So I had three shortcuts set up that if somebody asked for something, I could just type in a code and it would send them the full address. So in other words, it's an autocorrect. Tried to do it on the Samsung, then immediately as soon as I did the video, other people were saying, well, I can't find that menu. In it, but it's not just Samsung, this is Android as a whole. Um, it, the only thing you can do is get into the settings and have a look what options there are available to you. Right. Where would you get a business version, is what Gwen's asking, of the S9 then? Um, how on earth would you would you know that you got it? Because, I mean, I no. didn't even know there were two different versions. No, I didn't until I spoke to Samsung yesterday. And I will put the link into uh, the thread. There we are. So I put the link into there. Um, uh, that's the Samsung S9, the business model. But it was, um, that is, from what I can gather, is Samsung's offering. So that's direct with Samsung, not that's through Carphone Warehouse or the other. You'll see on uh, you'll see on it that it actually says it is uh, it's Samsung Knox K N O X. It is it's it will say it's secured with Knox technology. Uh, obviously, I'm assuming that means Fort Knox uh, with the with it. Um, I've never seen it widely advertised like that. It is another layer of security that it's adding to it. Uh, if you deal with potentially an independent phone provider, so someone who deals with possibly unified uh, communications, so that's the, the people who might deal with VoIP phones, mobile contracts for business, things like that, you might be able to, they might be able to source those and be resellers for them. Uh, they will probably have a good awareness, so they can, so you can say, is this particular model the one that has full encryption? They can say yes or no, but your general high street purchase, you unless you actually physically see that it's got the option in there, uh, you're going to have to assume the worst because they're not being forthright about it. Uh, and it's not coming out as in, we're just doing this. 
um, which is, I have to say, is flabbergasting. It's, it is really strange because if take away business, as a home user, on my phone, I will have pictures of my children, my child. I will have my personal emails. I'll have my personal communications. I want to know that my personal device is secure. Why wouldn't I want it to be? I'm, because I'm a home user, do I deserve less security? Um, not at all. Uh, the way I... I think it's strange, isn't it? Now, let's assume that you've done all this encrypting of your device and you're on, yeah. you somehow managed to work your way through the Samson mystery religion of encryption and you've you've encrypted your SD card. Now, to be saying, but surely the pain with this now is that when you upgrade your phone, you can't just move your SD card to your new phone because it's encrypted to the old phone. How does yeah. that work? Uh, you would literally have to... It depends what you're going to put on your phone anyhow. So... If you were, if you had put apps on your SD card, you wouldn't just take them across anyhow because they need to be installed with the operating system. So when you go to your Google Play Store and you click install, it downloads and it installs the apps so that the things tie together. So it's never going to be, so it really is, wouldn't be something you just take the app and put it across. What you tend to do is reinstall the apps. There, there are backup facilities out there so you can back up the device and restore it, and it will try and restore the, the apps and the data with the apps. Um, but, they are, but if you're changing models drastically, they're not always guaranteed to work. Uh, they do put that as a disclaimer. Even if you change it within the same manufacturer, they will state there's there's risks involved. Um, personally speaking, I always like the opportunity of an upgrade to do a bit of house clearing because I find over a two-year period that on my phone I've gathered so many apps of, oh, try this, that'd be quite good, oh, let's have a look. And then you don't delete them, you just accumulate a few apps. Whereas if you've backed up your phone and you restore it to your new phone, then all those apps move straight over with it. Whereas I go, right, the phone is set up from new, from scratch. I manually move what data I want to cross onto it. Therefore, I've got only the apps I need. So my current phone is about six months old, um, and it has nowhere near the same number of apps that my old phone had I'd be up to point to two years. So I've only put on there the things I'm actually using, and then the old phone I completely and utterly securely wipe, uh, but I keep that in-house anyhow, so it never gets passed off to anybody. Uh, it's always kept so, in house. I didn't even Just, know you could put apps on an SD card. It never occurred to me. I, I think the only thing I've ever used it for is to store numbers on the SD card so that when I change phones, I have my kind of core contacts. I don't bother with that so much because I can get my uh, contacts synced back down again now. Yeah. But I used to put my phone numbers on the card. That was the only thing yeah. I ever used it for. That, yeah, the, the older phones used to be when you could start storing more information that you had a phone memory or you had a card memory and you put the data onto the card as you and then as you upgraded your phone, you can move that across. With smartphones, because they link to the cloud, your Android phones are all linked to Google, your iPhones are all linked to Apple, your Microsoft phones are linked to, to Microsoft, uh, to probably an Outlook account um, or style account. They all synchronize your data up and down. So literally you move to a new phone, and that's the thing of certain data you don't need to take across because it's it's automatically synchronized for you. Uh, and that's why when you use a phone and a tablet, they'll both have contacts on and the, the data synchronized between the two. Uh, it's massively improved since uh, sort of 2006 when you saw your iPhones were sort of coming out because you your apps wouldn't be able to transfer data. Now, since the, the later versions of the iOS, the apps will can use iCloud to transfer the data. So it's always synchronized between whatever devices because you might have two iPhones, you might have two, uh, a phone and a tablet. Same with your Android, you'll have a phone, a tablet, the, the devices should all be linked together. There's some more things going on in the chat room. Um, Claire's saying funny she can't find the price of this Knox. It's not an extra, is it? It comes with the phone or it doesn't. Is that how it works? From what I, from what they said to me yesterday, they said I'd need to return the because I, I went through the statement of okay, I've got the phone. How do I turn it on? So they would talk me through the menu, and they said uh, that won't have it. You'll need to return it and then order the business one. So it's not a case of an app or something that goes on it. It's something that they build into their their version of the operating system. So it's it's hard coded in there. So you can't buy it. You've either got it or you haven't on your phone. Yeah. It's the end of that. Um, now, Sarah said it. She's just looked at the S7, and they're actually advertising this. This is the Samsung S7 as the most secure phone in the world. So um, 
how can they be doing that? Do they mean if you turn all this stuff on, it could be? Uh, generally, it's it's the the idea will be about how you get into view. The, the difficulty is it's the terminology. It's it's part of the terminology of the ICO versus the actual security. So if I don't have the encryption, so the encryption is not turned on on this one because it doesn't hold any actual real data. Uh, it's used training. So if you were to steal that, and I had no SD card in there, the normal person cannot get into the chips to view the data. Yes, they might be able to go through that way uh, with the with an, uh, a USB card, but they need to have certain apps that they would have had to have found in certain extreme places, or they need to be very capable programmers, things like that. So generally, a phone without the SD card in it is quite secure. And for home user, it is generally quite secure. The why well, they're not secure is if you were, say, a government agency, you would, or you sent to a data recovery place, they could take the chips out and recover from the actual chips because it's the same as having data on a USB stick. There's a little chip in there which holds the ones and zeros. USB sticks break. You can still send them to data recovery places to get the data back. They take the chip off it, which holds the data, and they place it onto a new board, plug it in, and that actually will give you the data back. It costs a lot of money to do that. So a typical thief isn't going to typically do it with your phone. The, down, the, the problem is, ICO's terminology is, if it's not encrypted and you lose it, you have to report it to them at least as a data breach. If it is encrypted, you don't have to report it. But they have not made you have to encrypt all your devices. That's the... The trade-off with it. Yeah, Sarah's asking a very good question. Um, she says, so if we don't use an SD card in our phone and the device itself can be encrypted without the phone, without the card, then we're all right, the device is encrypted. Yeah, uh, if, if, the, yeah. if there is a slide on there to say the device, you can encrypt the device, that's fine. Uh, you typically would use an SD card or, and it depends on what data is actually going to be on the SD card. If you don't move, the, the some of the traps people have fallen into with Androids are they've bought a, an Android with eight gigabytes of memory and they find that they, ha they start putting apps on it like Facebook, email, things like that and within uh, a few weeks they've run out of memory. And the whole point of the Android is you can buy an SD card that's 64 gig in size, put it in and then you can move some of your apps over and they can be on the SD card. If you buy your Android phone with a decent amount of memory, so something like 32 gigabytes as minimum, you will never run out of memory on there for your actual apps. So what you use USD card is for photos you've taken, so maybe personal photos as in, you know, your family, your trips to a seaside, things like that, and music that you might want to carry around with you. At that point, what data do you have? Well, I've turned on the encryption on my device and all my business apps are on the actual device. My holiday photos and my music on the SD card Actually, I've got no personal data on the unencrypted storage. So, but it's about being aware of what you're storing. So if you make sure your business data is purely on your device, that's fine. If it's on the SD card, that would also need to be encrypted. But uh, I think as you just put, said, the it looks like it might be under the app settings where you can turn on the encryption for the SD card. So if you don't see it under settings, look through some of the others. Where we are at the moment, because some people join like five minutes in, ten minutes in, is people with iPhones are sorted, it's all turned on. Yeah. People with Androids need to turn it on, and not every Android has got effective encryption. But we're yeah. not saying you must therefore get rid of your phone today and buy a more expensive one. What we're yeah. saying is when you come up to the end of your contract or when you're looking at renewal, you really need to look at this issue. And in the meantime, you need to be careful about what you store on your phone and, and how you physically take care of your phone. Some people have said they actually had phones stolen from their bag when they had their bag. So we know yeah. it's it's a hazard of theft, isn't yeah. it? It is. Um, it, but we're not saying to people go out and spend a thousand pounds on a state of the art phone today, otherwise you've got a problem. This is you might have to identify it on your data audit at the moment cannot completely encrypt phone, we'll review that when phone needs replacing. Yeah. Yeah, we're not saying yeah. you must go out and spend tons of money today, are we? 
And the, the phones that don't have the encryption as a device do have what's called a secure folder. I would recommend turning that on and having an experiment with it purely because that will allow at least allow you to limit certain information. Because the thing is, if you've just got names and phone numbers in your address, in your contact list, and that's the bit that can't be encrypted, then the where ICO say, well, you've got to report it as a breach or you've got to be more involved or there's going to be an investigation is what damage can be done from it. So um, the, the talk talk, which was the one that they really wanted to go after, which was a minimal fine, was purely on the basis that the data that was stolen wasn't just a name and address of the customer, or, sorry, wasn't just a username and the password. It was a username, the encrypted password, so they couldn't get in with the password, that's fine. But it also was the name, the address, the telephone number, and the talk talk account number. So what you had there was people ringing up claiming, we're from talk talk. Um, we, we can confer, we can prove to you if we talk to because we know your name, we know your address, and we know your account number. How would we know that if we weren't from talk? And then they were talking them into doing things on their computer, which allowed them access. And that was a big breach, and that was dangerous to the users. If it had just been a username and a password that was encrypted, that's not dangerous to the users. So Tristan, we're coming up to the end of our hour now, and you've given us some amazing information. And as usual, the chat room is alive with people who've got very specific questions that if you've got a moment, it will be really brilliant if you don't answer. Um, because obviously you've got so many people on so many platforms and we've got people asking, how do I choose? What goes yeah. on the SD card? I mean, what's amazing is you have all this technology. And I've yeah. discovered I've got very little idea how much of it works, really. I thought I did because I knew I could work it. But it's yeah. the difference between being able to drive and being able to service your car, isn't it? Yeah. That exactly. we're kind of beginning to look under the hood here. And I've discovered I didn't even know where the bonnet catch was, which is yeah. not an uncommon experience for me. So I want to thank you so much for your thank time. You. Thank you so much, Tristan. Look forward to talking yeah. to you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.